So now check this out. We're in April, 2023. I'm illustrating month ahead in May as I'm record I'm recording this video in April, but in May, I'm showing what the numbers should look like. So I'm not even including cash flow for April. And that again, these are just really cool techniques to use as a as a coach perspective. So talking to my coaches out there, my consultants, velocity banking practitioners that are trying to help your family and friends and clients, right? Coworkers, whatever it may be, creating all that buffer really allows your client to to see the vast opportunity that's that's here. And you can say, look, conservatively, look how much faster you're going. When in reality, you're probably gonna be going like a month, two, three months faster than what I'm saying, right? So it's just really cool there to, to keep in mind. So now the following month is June. After May comes June. In June is when I'm getting this payout of 51,894 comes every year, same time in June. So every year in June, this person receives 51,894. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna park that money right in the HELOC, drastically reduce it. So I did 109, 209, 48, and then add this number, right? Once you add that number up, then minus income, then minus lump sum, you should get this number, 41,213.54. Again, take that number times by 9%. Take this number times by 9%. Divide by 365 and get your daily costs. Now, here's how I wrote the expense number to accommodate, right? So I see, I see how I'm slowly out adding the elements here slowly adding it. So I'm saying 12,184.25 minus cashback rewards. So what I did was I minus 284.64 from this number, right? You should get that number. Then I minus $64.29 from that number. 12,248.54, you get this, 12,184.25. Then I'm saying minus, again, 58.59. Once you get that number, add that to the 41, you should be here. 53,397.79. Look where the interest costs dropped. So we went from 789.60 to 504.46, right? So that's now $285.14, okay? Additional principal paying down the balance of that, that tool, right? Add your cashback rewards, right? Which was mentioned right here. So end of June, I should be around here. 53,397.79 plus that number, right? And then we can decide, okay, went from 113 all the way down to 53 because of that lump sum and doing velocity banking. Hmm, I might be tempted to pay off the car now. And I would say, yeah, you could totally do that. But in this case, since we're brand new, we're only two months in of doing velocity banking, I'm, I'm you know, talking to the client, hey, you know, we, we could get our feet wet by simply practicing the concept a couple more months to get really comfortable, money going in, money coming out, money going in, money coming out, right? Creating that velocity of money flow. I'm illustrating making that chunk in July, three months later from our start date, May, June, July. You could wait a little longer, it's fine, but we really shouldn't wait too long. I right? shouldn't really shouldn't wait too long because the, the debt that we have, the 8.49 on this vehicle, which is around 50, which will be around 50,000 owed in, in July, we're at the top of that debt that amortization schedule. We're at the top of it. Just got the car. Just started financing it. Just started making payments in uh, April, May of 23. We just started. So the most amount of interest is to be saved up front. So we don't want to wait too long. But again, getting our feet wet. We're not in trouble whether we wait a couple more months, do it in June, do it in July. Not a huge deal. If we did it in July, we go right back to somewhere around what we were owing, right? So let's just say we waited an additional month, right? So income goes in, brings the balance down, expenses come out. Notice how I'm, see how I'm adding the different elements little by little, add the cash back rewards. I'm adding the, the principal addition each time, bringing the number down, right? Minusing that principal, 11,840.52. Again, that's still not true. It's still technically not true. Right. What's actually coming out of the tool is the 11,39465 of actual expenses, right? The interest is what is going to bring that number up. Whatever that difference is, is going to result in a number around here. But again, that interest didn't go somewhere else. It just came from the available equity in the tool itself. So that's where they would charge the interest from, from the tool itself, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, some banks may not do that. Some banks still require you to, you know, make a payment. And if that's the case, even after dumping all your income in, if the bank still doesn't register your income as the payment, which I have not 
had that situation yet where a bank doesn't recognize the payment. So understand that for the most part here, from my knowledge, from what I'm aware of, working with thousands of people at this point, hundreds of different scenarios, anytime you deposit, make a payment into your debt tool, that is registering as a payment. You may be given the option where it says, make additional principal payment or make monthly payment of say 1138.53. So if you made an additional principal payment on the due date, you're still gonna owe that monthly payment. You can talk to the bank and you can ask them, hey, on the due date, are you able to just pull the interest owed from the equity balance or is that gonna get pulled from my checking account, right? If they say we can pull it from the home equity line of credit itself to pay the bill, then that's fine, you're good. If they say no, it has to, payment has to be made from your checking account, then all you would be doing is, since all your income already went in the line, follow me, all your income already went in the line, so you're like, my checking account's at zero, how am I gonna pay that interest on the due date? You just move the money out of the HELOC and then have it go right back in, pays the interest. Does that make sense? So if we're approaching the due date, say it's the fifth of the month and your HELOC's due and you owe 500 bucks in interest, right? But you've already made all your principal payments in advance. So now all you owe is the interest and they're not gonna pull it from the equity. Then you would just literally withdraw $500 out of your HELOC and it pays the interest to the bank, right? Because we've already calculated for that, right? In our expenses, we already accounted for it. The difference is that that principal gap from what the original payment was. So in this case, the original payment is a is 1,138.53. And I'm illustrating each and every month that 1,138.53 is, is like an expense to something else. That's not the case. That's why I'm you know, saying, look, in reality, we, you have more money staying in the line than you realize when you're doing this. And I'm just breaking down the different elements, cashback rewards, principal difference, right? Uh, cash flow recovery from month to month. And we can see that that large gap that occurs, right? 